Now we have to take note of the following. If we want to identify the parts of the ellipse using the equation. So for the center, we know that is hk. For the vertices, we have h plus or minus a, then k. For the co-vertices, h, then k plus minus b. For the foci, h plus minus c, k. And for the directrix, x equals h plus minus a squared over c. So again, these are the formulas that we can follow in order for us to identify the parts of the ellipse given the equation. Take note, this is just for horizontal ellipse. For vertical, center, it's still hk. But this time for the vertices, we will be adding a to k since the movement will be on the y-axis. For the co-vertices, we will add b to h and then same value for k. For the full side, we have to add or subtract c to k and then h will remain. And then for the directrix, it will be y equals k plus minus a squared over c. Now, why is it plus and minus? Because there are always two vertices, two co-vertices, two foci, and then two directrix. So they are on the different sides of the ellipse. So that's why you have to add and subtract. Now, you just have to get the values of hk, also the values of a, which is half of our major axis, and then we also have to find b, which is half of the minor axis, and then we also have to find c, which is can be solved using square root of a squared minus c squared. And after that, we can now identify the parts. So let's try to solve for the parts of the ellipse given this equation. x plus 6 squared over 25 plus y minus 5 squared over 9 equals 1. So first thing that we have to know is the orientation of the ellipse. And to know the orientation, we should be familiar with the equation itself. In order to do that, we have to locate where is the larger number. So the larger number between 25 and 9, obviously is 25, and that is with our x. That means it now follows the form x minus h squared over a squared, because the larger number will always be our a squared. Plus, then we have y minus 5 squared over b squared equals 1. So, if the equation follows this form, therefore, we can say that it is horizontal ellipse. Now, after identifying the orientation, we can now get the values of a and b using our a squared and b squared. So, from the equation, we can say that a squared is 25 because, again, it is the larger number. And then we have b squared, which is 9. So if a squared is 25, therefore a is 5, and if b squared is 9, therefore b is 3. So we already have the values of a and b. So next thing that we have to identify is the center so that we can have the values of h and k. So center is, again denoted by h, k. So you just have to look at the given equation since it's already in standard form. So h is always with x and k is always with y. So we have x plus 6, but the original formula is x minus h. Therefore, h now is a negative 6. Because x minus negative 6 will give us x plus 6. And then for k, we have 5. So these are now the values of h, k. After that, we can now identify the vertices. So in identifying the vertices, knowing that the graph or the ellipse is horizontal, we shall use h plus minus a k. So we will be adding a to h and then we will just copy the value for k to identify the vertices. So we know that h is negative 6, so negative 6 plus minus a is 5. And then k is 5. So what are the two vertices? So first is we have negative 6 plus 5. That is negative 1. And then we have k which is 5. So this is the first coordinate or location of the vertices. 
Second, we have negative 6 minus 5, that's negative 11. And then K is 5, so 5. So these are the locations of the two vertices. First is negative 1, 5. Second is negative 11, 5. After identifying now the vertices, let's identify the co-vertices. For the co-vertices, since the ellipse is horizontal, so let's follow the form H, K plus minus B. So H is negative 6. So we have negative 6. Then K is 5. Then we're adding and subtracting the value of B, which is 3. So again, we have 2 coordinates for this. Negative 6, then 5 plus 3 is 8. And then we have negative 6, 5 minus 3 is 2. So these are now the locations of our co-vertices. After identifying the co-vertices, we can now identify first the value of C because we cannot identify the foci and also the directrix if we don't know the value of C. So to get C, we have to use square root of a squared minus b squared. And we have the values of a and b, which is 5 and 3. So c equals the square root of a squared is 5 squared minus 3 squared. We have square root of 25 minus 9. c equals square root of 16. Or c now is equal to 4. So this is now the value of c. So we can use this later on to identify the endpoints or to identify the foci and also our directrix. Now let's identify the location of the foci. So for our foci, we have to follow the form H plus minus CK since the ellipse is horizontal. So we have H is negative 6 plus minus C is 4. And then K is 5. So we again have two answers here. So for the first one, negative 6 plus 4, that will give us negative 2. And then copy 5. Second is we have negative 6 minus 4 is negative 10 and 5. So these are the location of our foci. And last thing that we have to identify is the directrix or the equation of our directrix. So since the ellipse is horizontal, we will follow x equals h plus minus a squared over c. So this will give us two equations for our directrix. So x equals h is negative 6 plus minus a is 5, so 5 squared over c which is 4. So x equals negative 6 plus minus 25 over 4. Now you solve them separately. x equals negative 6 plus 25 over 4. And x equals negative 6 minus 25 over 4. So if you simplify this, we will have x equals 1 fourth. And x equals negative 49 over 4. So these two are the equations of our directrix. So now that we already have the parts of the ellipse, we can now graph. So let's just use uh, Desmos for this. So here in Desmos, we can graph the ellipse and see if the parts are correct based on the output that we have. So let's type first the equation x plus 6 squared over 25 plus y minus 5 squared over 9 equals 1. So this is now the graph of our ellipse. So as you can see, um, it's a horizontal ellipse. Now let's plot the vertex now let's plot the center so we have negative 6 5 so there you go that is our center and then let's plot 
the vertices. So we have negative 1, 5, and another one is a negative 11, 5. So these are the vertices. For the co-vertices, we have negative 6, 8, and negative 6, 2. The next, let's uh, graph or plot the foci. So we have negative 2, 5. And then we also have negative 10, 5. So these are the two foci. And then last is, let's plot the directrix. So we have x equals 1 fourth. Then we also have x equals negative 49 over 4. There. So there you go. So this is now the graph of our ellipse. So we have the vertex. These two vertices here, the center, foci. We have the co-vertices and the directrix. So that is the graph of the first ellipse that we have. Next, let's have x plus 1 squared over 36 plus y minus 9 squared over 100 equals 1. So let's identify again the orientation of the ellipse. So identify where is the larger denominator. So it's 100 and it's with y. So therefore, this is now our a squared. So it follows now the form x minus h squared over b squared plus y minus k squared over a squared equals 1. Thus, we can say that the orientation of our ellipse is vertical. So from that, we can now get the values of a and b. So a squared is our 100, b squared is 36. So a is equal to 10 and b is 6. So just have to get the square root. After that, let's identify now the center or the hk. So looking at the equation, h is with x and k is with y. So h is negative 1 because x minus negative 1 is x plus 1. And then our k is 9. So this is now the h k. After identifying the center, let's now identify the vertices. Since the ellipse is vertical, it follows now the form h k plus minus a. Since the movement that will happen for the vertices will be upward and downward. So h is negative 1, k is 9, then we will add and subtract a which is 10 to it. So the first location of the vertices is negative 1, then 9 plus 10 is 19. So that's the first location. Then next is we have negative 1, then 9 minus 10 that will give us negative 1. So the location of the vertices, we have negative 1, 19 and negative 1, negative 1. Next, let's identify the co-vertices. For the co-vertices, since it is a vertical ellipse, so it follows the form h plus minus bk. So we have h is negative 1 plus and minus b is 6 and then k is 9. So we have here for the first one, negative 1 plus 6 is 5 and then copy 9. For the second, we have negative 1 minus 6 is negative 7 and then 9. So these are the two locations of our co-vertices. Now let's identify the value of c first. So we have c equals the square root of a squared minus b squared. So c equals the square root of a is 10 and b is 6. So 10 squared minus 6 squared. c equals the square root of 100 minus 36. So we have c equals square root of 64 or c equals 8. So now that we have the values of hk, 
C, A, and B, we can now proceed with identifying the location of foci and the directrix. Now, let's identify the location of the foci. So, since it is a vertical ellipse, it follows the form H, K, plus, minus, C. So, H is negative 1, K is 9. Then, we add and subtract C to it, which is 8. So, for the first location of the foci, we have negative 1. 9 plus 8 is 17. For the second location, negative 1. 9 minus 8 is 1. So, these are the location of our foci. And last is, that's solve for the directrix. So, for the directrix, since... The ellipse is vertical, so the formula that we will use is y equals k plus minus a squared over c. So we have y equals, then k is 9, plus minus a is 10, 10 squared over c which is 8. So we have y equals 9 plus minus 100 over 8. So we can simplify this even more, y equals 9 plus minus 100 over 8 can be simplified as 25 over 2 and then solve them separately so we have y equals 9 plus 25 over 2 and we have y equals 9 minus 25 over 2 then simplify each equation so we have y equals this one is 43 over 2 and then the other one is y equals negative 7 over 2. So these two are the equations of our directrix. Now since we already have the parts, we can now graph the given ellipse. And let's use again the Desmos. So let's type in the equation x plus 1 squared over 36 plus then we have y minus 9 squared over 100 equals 1. So this is our ellipse. And then let's um, plot the center, negative 1, 9. And we have the vertices. First is negative 1, 19. The other one is negative 1, negative 1. And for our co-vertices, we have 5, 9. And we have negative 7, 9. So again, these two are our co-vertices. Then let's plot the foci. We have negative 1, 17. The other one is negative 1, 1. And last, let's plot our directrix. We have y equals 43 over 2. And the other one is y equals negative 7 over 2. So that's it. This is now the graph of our ellipse. So as you can see, the ellipse is vertical. And here are the parts of the given ellipse. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something about the definition of ellipse as well as the equation and the parts of ellipse. And see you next time.